Yeah, yo, what's going on, you guys? Your boy Devon Toro in raw form, and welcome to another Help Me Devon Raw tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon Raw tutorial, I'll be showing you guys one step to make any sound in your mix bigger. Check this out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bypass this back and forth, this one effect that I have, to give you an idea of what is happening. So pay attention to the mute button that I'm gonna keep clicking back and forth. It's just gonna be the instrument section that I'm gonna let you hear, and I'm gonna mute it back and forth to let you get an idea of what's there. Okay, so before we go any further, I will ask you guys to make sure you subscribe and like to keep this channel thriving and going. Make sure you also go to helpmedevon.info at any time to get some of our templates uh, and vocal chains and presets. Uh, we have stuff for Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton, FL Studio, and Studio One. Now, what is happening here? Obviously, when I have it muted, it feels like the instruments just kind of fall back into this weird space as far as not being able to it doesn't feel as strong as it did as opposed to when I have it engaged. What am I doing to make these instruments sound more powerful in the mix? I am using parallel compression, but not the parallel compression that you're accustomed to me always talking about. Instead, I'm using parallel compression to bring out my instruments and I'm using it solely on my instruments. Now, I know what you're saying to yourself. Well, wouldn't you do that? Can't you do that to the entire mix? Here's the thing, when it comes to your instruments, typically those are things that more support uh, your vocals, the kicks and things like that of that nature. So what's gonna happen is your parallel compressor is going to catch the higher volume stuff, the things with more uh, amplitude uh, or volume. So when you put the parallel compressor on the entire mix, it's really gonna catch those kicks, that vocal, and the instruments are gonna come up a little bit, but it kind of gets lost in that place. So what if you instead parallel compress just the instruments by itself? That means that that pad is gonna get caught in there, that piano is gonna get caught in there. You crush these instruments, basically making a separate uh, uh, channel where you're crushing those instruments and blending that in with the original instruments so that doesn't destroy the actual sonics of the original instruments. So I'm creating this really tight ball of audio with just compressing the instruments and bringing that in. So check this out, I'll do it again. So I'm gonna bring this way down and let you hear it as I bring it up, check this out. And the beautiful thing about this is it doesn't eat up so much headroom as opposed to just taking your instruments and just turning it up. Now you have something that is more of the nuances of those instruments are really brought out without damaging the dynamics of the original sound. So now those subtleties that allow us to hear hanging on our ears sit a lot better in that mix now that there's a, ball, a tight ball of audio just hanging up there. And now it, can, it feels even better with the vocals and with the drums and everything. So I'll give you an idea of what it sounds like. So let's put it to 29, let's put it to like right here. Let's exaggerate it just a little bit so you can get an idea of how it sits in the mix. So check this out, I'm gonna bypass it back and forth with all the music, peep this. But when we get alone and it's just you and me in this bed People ringing our phones and they probably thinking we dead I could have died, man, oh this is chronic, yeah That girl hit harder than narcotics, me and my ex was toxic, yeah Roll up. When I have it muted, you feel like the instruments just kind of fall to the background, as opposed to when I put the parallel compressor on of all those instruments, it feels like it hangs and it sits in a much better, tighter spot. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how to set it up for your own mixes. And remember, you could just do this to your pad. If you just wanna parallel compress your pad, parallel compress your pad. It'll help you to help that pad sit in a tighter space within your mix, as opposed to trying to just boost it. Now you could just have something that tucks under it that makes it feel a little bit more full. So that's really what this parallel compressor does to your instruments. If you want a lot more fullness and make that sound bigger, parallel compress the entire instrument uh, section. How do you do it? I'm gonna show you for any DAW. So long story short, this is what I do. I go on over to all my instruments, right? I go to this, 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 my textures, any sound effects as well, sweeps, uh, vocal effects, 
uh, atmospheres, all the sound effects, all of that stuff gets grouped into one place, right? Not the bass, not the kick, not the vocals, all that stuff, none of that stuff, just straight up instruments, the pianos, the synths, all of that stuff, I group that into one place. What I then do is I send each one of those tracks out with a send to the instrument parallel bus. So I put an instrument send, excuse me, I put a send out to on each of these instruments to the instrument parallel bus. So all of these are be, being sent out to the instrument parallel bus. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, in some of your DAWs, I just want you to be mindful of this, I send this out post fader. Now, granted, when it comes to the usual typical compression par of parallel compression style, you usually send it out to your parallel compressor pre-fader. And the reason why you send it out pre-fader is because when you send it out, you really don't want to do this, where you go to this knob, and when you move this down, the entire uh, parallel compressor changes because you've changed the amount of volume going into it. So that's why people say, hey, send it out to your parallel compressor pre-fader so the volume isn't a affected at all as opposed to this way. Now with this way, I don't do it pre-fader. And the reason why I do it post-fader is because when I make a change over here with these instruments on their actual faders, I do want the mix of those to be affected in the parallel compressor. Now, what that means is when I move one of these faders down like this, this main lead one, if I move it down, what's gonna happen is in the parallel compress bus, it's also gonna come down. And that's what I want. I wanna maintain my original mix as much as possible. That's what diff makes it so different from the typical parallel compressing because usually you would do it pre-fader, which it wouldn't be affected by your mix as far as you moving the knobs. So that's why I do it this way. So long story short, I take all the instrument parallels, uh, sends, send it out to this instrument parallel bus. So now that they're all sent out at zero so that it keeps the mix of what I had, I go on over to my instrument parallel bus. I use my NLS channels just to give me a little bit of analog saturation, very, very subtle. You don't even need to do that to be honest. And the next thing I do is I go on over to my compressor. So I like to use a very hard ratio, as you guys know, when it comes to parallel compression. With the 1176 CLA from Waves, which I'll leave a link in the description below, I, use, I like to use the all function because that makes it about a 50 to one ratio. And this is pretty much a legendary compressor known for parallel compression. So I put it to all. I put a really, really uh, slow to medium release because I want that audio to be held. And I put a very fast attack because I'm trying to hold those transients. I barely want any transients to come through. I just want a ball of audio. So I'm smashing this vocal. So check out how it's reacting. And when we get alone and it's just you and me in this bed People ringing our phones and And it's really dope because you know what's happening? It's now adding this cool kind of dynamic to the actual original sound. And why it is is because when it releases, that volume just comes up and it feels a lot more alive and then it smashes it back down. So you're getting this movement in the actual instrument section as well to make it sound even bigger. The last thing I do with it is I do a slight bit of EQ. Now, the reason why I do a roll off at about the 62 Hertz range and then I take out some of that basically 2K range is because now that I've boosted some elements in this actual parallel compression, I do wanna make sure that I'm not adding so much low end rumble and I wanna take out some of the 2K section just so I'm not competing with the vocals too much now that I've added this ball of compressed audio. So that's just my rule of thumb with the whole thing. So that was basically my um, tutorial on how I like to use, or better yet, sorry, how I like to make uh, sounds bigger in your mix with just one step. Literally, it's a technique that I just p personally developed one day sitting here and saying, hey, I think I could parallel compress just the instrument section so that it's paid attention to when I create this boiler audio. So make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you want to hear uh, or see next in the comments. You can also make sure you join our community and follow us on our Discord. Head on over to helpmedevon.info if you want any of our templates, etc. Make sure you follow us at Help me Devon on the Instagram and until next time, you guys.